Why is it that no matter what you do, your watch times just won't increase fast enough? The good news is there is one thing that will make your watch times jump like crazy. <laughs> now one thing is to make videos that get watched longer. To get more watch time, you need to make videos that get watched longer. That's your advice. <laughs> but actually, he's right. And the biggest reason people find it so hard to increase their watch times is because they're not actually looking in the right places to learn how to do this. Because YouTube is not the king of holding people's attention for vast amounts of time in one session. Movies, however, and actually sci-fi films in particular, well, they are. So by the end of this video, it's my goal to give you a new understanding of how getting more watch time actually works and how making longer videos could possibly be the worst thing to do to get more watch time. And what you can learn from Hollywood, the champions of this metric, to get viewer durations that start to make Avatar look like a short film. And the place to start with epic watch times? Interest. Hollywood is amazing at generating interest. I mean, how many times in your life have you turned up to the cinema and chosen a movie at random to watch that you've never heard of? Probably never. And if you have, you're daredevil you. So with cinema, we make a decision that we're gonna give a movie our time and attention because we've seen the trailer and thought, I'm interested in devoting my time to watching that. Probably less formal in your own head. <laughs> you need to make sure people will be interested in your video before they devote the time to watch it. Because if someone has an interest in your content, they will by default be prepared to give it more time than someone who is only a little bit interested. The next thing we can steal from movies is the journey. This is very, very important. Every film in history of films follows exactly the same system, actually apart from Memento. And that is that films have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and they all take viewers on a journey. So it's the beginning's job to hook a viewer, the middle to fill out the story and keep people glued to the screen, and the end to wrap it all up and turn the whole thing into a really positive experience, one to be remembered ideally. Let's start by looking at the beginning first. Films always start the same way to hook a viewer. An actor doesn't just stand there and say, in this film, I'm gonna tell you a story about a man in a tuxedo fighting bad guys who eventually gets the girl, but he's cold and dead and angry inside. Now that would ruin the film and it's not a hook. It's just saying what the title of the video is again. So what do films do? Well, they tend to jump straight into the story, don't they? And the best intros you'll ever see don't always make it crystal clear what's happening, but they are made in a way that makes you wanna find out what exactly is going on. And that's kind of the key here. Your intro's job is to make someone want to to find out more, but again, it's easier said than done. The simplest way to do this is to make an intro your viewer relates to really fast so they say, I do that, or yeah, I totally get that, or yeah, that's so true. One option is to start with the problem your viewers might have that drew them to your content. You're gonna know what this is because in step one, you will have worked out the thing that really interests them. And then instead of just saying it, you wanna show it. This is so important for watch time. Show, don't tell. It will change your intro forever. So here's an example. You make a video about baking. The video is called How to Make the Best Sponge Cake. So the uninspiring way to start this video would be to say, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make the best sponge cake. Or if you'd establish that actually a lot of people have tried to make this cake, but they really struggle to do it because it's hard, you could use the problem method where you simply show an awful looking cake and you say, if your sponge cakes are looking like this, by the end of this video, my five fixes are gonna have it looking like this. So can you see the difference there? The problem method shows the viewer the exact issue they came to the video with. And it's like, oh, this is for me. I'm saying you're gonna make the best cake, it doesn't necessarily tell them you've got the answers they're looking for. The next thing to learn from cinema is the middle. Using a baking video as an example, the main steps are just gonna be baking a cake. Now your video might not be so instructional, so you need to spend the time planning to make sure that your content isn't just disjointed. People leave the topic their viewers really care about, and even doing this for just 10 seconds could be enough for them to hit back and tail off. If you can make a video that flows seamlessly from one point to the next without repetition or tangents and always focuses on that thing that your viewers really care about deep down, it will make the viewer feel like time's actually passing quite fast. So when planning your content, break your middle into multiple acts like so. Then write down what each act needs to contain. And what I like to do is to write down the emotion you want this act to work with too. Now before I get on to discussing the end, because there's actually a lot to it, I need to throw in another important part of your video's journey, and it's gonna boost your watch times, and that's this. Amazing films with epic watch times all have something in common. 
at some point they will make you go, wow, I was not expecting that. They completely surpass your expectations, right? Which means you need to do this with your own videos too. And that means you need to throw in some plot twists into your content because an amazing twist makes a movie so much better. To emulate this in your videos, devote a section to them, one of the acts, with the aim of giving people some information they would never have expected to receive when they hit play, but in a positive way, because you still wanna keep it super relevant to the topic they're interested in. And actually, this could be a solution to a problem you might have found with your own content. So do you ever make videos that you think are awesome and you just know that the content in them is so fantastic that it can't not be a hit? And then you release it and it just tanks. And you're like, what? That was amazing. Why did no one watch it? But you do get some comments from a few people that say, that was incredible. I've never heard anything like that before. So that doesn't mean the interest in the actual content of the video isn't there though. Sometimes people just don't know that a title will actually help them more than one that they click on that won't. So to get around this, use plot twists in your content. Make your video's title and main story about the thing you know your viewers really care about and will always click on to bring in views and then start the video focusing on that main interest. But then later in the video, get in the information you know they won't click on, but you know they will really love because it's so fantastic when they do discover it. It's a watch time weapon. So before I move on to the next things to do to get more watch time, I'm gonna show you something that's actually gonna help you measure watch time in a totally different way to what you're used to. And it goes a bit deeper than just watch time stats or average viewer duration stats. I'm gonna show you how many people actually got to the end of your videos, the very end. So go to your YouTube analytics, then select advanced mode in the top right. Then you wanna click on this arrow, and then I want you to go to end screen element. Okay, so this figure here, this is how many people saw your end screen. This is the best metric we have for knowing how many people actually made it right to the very end of your video. So on our channel here, there's like 77,000 end screen views in a 28 day period across the channel, which is 77,000 more chances to get more watch time, which means all you need to do is put a video or a playlist as an end screen here and you'll get more watch time. Plot twist. That was the plot twist in this video. I was gonna make an entire video about this feature, but nobody's gonna want to go to the cinema to watch a video about end screen views displayed. Why would anyone click on that? But now, hopefully you're going, oh, I, I've never seen this before, so you have my attention, Ed. And hopefully my plot twist has just re-engaged you with my video. So that's a plot twist in the wild. All of these previous steps are gonna help your viewers get to the end. And all you need to do then is to make sure you give them something else they're interested in to click on next. You basically need to become the Marvel Cinematic Universe and create some box sets for your viewers to get lost in. In other words, playlists. So all of the Avengers films, they link together. And it's why people love them, because the story carries over across tons of films and subtle references and Easter eggs in these movies keep the real fans engaged and interested throughout. And you can do this with your channel. Sure, people can skip to the different sections of your playlist they're really interested in, but once you've nailed the initial steps of your videos, then they just go on long content journeys and watch one video after the other. So the thing is, you've got to establish what the thing is they're really gonna be interested in by the time they get to the end of your video. And then all you do is just point people towards the next step. I do it in every video. Now, have you ever watched a film and you thought to yourself, yeah, that was good, but it was about 15 minutes too long. And that's because watch times in films tail off too if the journey isn't strong enough to hold people's attention. Ooh. Oh dear. Now YouTube decided watch time's king when it comes to promoting your videos more. And as a result of that, people say that you kind of need to make longer videos to get more watch time. But it's actually not true and longer videos could be damaging your channel. Have a listen to what Jessica Hatch said recently, who has over 1 million subscribers. You know, my average video length has, has gone from, you know, 10 minutes to eight minutes to now I try to keep my videos three to five minutes on my long form channel, unless they're dog treat videos. Those are usually eight to 12 minutes, but everything else we're uploading, I try to shorten it. I just try to, I try to get across what I need to get across as fast as possible, as efficiently as possible, and as entertaining as possible without all the fluff. So there is an element of learning what your audience likes and when to use it. So what you need to do is work out the watch time that works for your viewers the best, depending on the type of content you make. And that does not always mean longer. You might find your viewers like your review videos longer, but your tutorials shorter, which means you don't want to make long tutorials. Or like us, you might find that your viewers hang about for the same percentage of a video if it's 13 minutes or six, unless it's a tutorial, which is why they're now longer. So much work. 
So the next watch time booster, and this is where watch time is not just built, but turbocharged, are movie reviews. So if you love films, you probably read the reviews, right? Well, on YouTube, every video has a review section and it's the comments people leave, and they are a gold mine for your watch time. So go and find a creator who's made a similar video to a topic you want to cover that performed well, and make sure it looks like they have a similar audience, and then study the comments they get below their performing videos. I can't push this enough. Don't just read them, study them. Look out for the things people say that pop up time and time again, and then make sure you find a way to answer these in your videos. That's the basics, but actually the real power here is the next thing to study, and that is the emotions in the comments. So people write how they feel in comments all of the time. So they might say, I like making videos, but it's so hard to stay motivated and focused. And that comment then might have tons of likes and other comments agreeing. So you wanna take that and relate those feelings early on in your video. And one thing you might not have realized is, I actually did it at the start of this video. Let's have a rewind and check that out. Whoa. Hang on, if I've got the lightsaber, then where's the remote? Captain, come in. I'm under heavy fire, and I'm out of ammo. Use the lightsaber. Lightsaber? Oh no, it's there. Anyway, let's rewind. There. Why is it that no matter what you do, your watch times just won't increase fast enough? That is literally the exact words of comments multiple people left about watch time. And now we need some special effects. So, is that it? After all of that, that was the special effects they've given it. So I find this fascinating, but one of the things I often read in comments below other people's videos is people saying, wow, I've never heard anything like that before. What's interesting about this is the information in the video the creator gave isn't actually new in a lot of cases. And I'd be willing to bet that the people who commented that they'd never heard this before have actually heard it a million times. Thing is, this is the first time they not only listened, but understood. And there's a huge difference between hearing something and understanding it. So in order to make people actually listen to you, special effects are needed. And by special effects, I don't mean things like this. Nice. But actually, some tools anyone can use to make people say, I've never heard anything like that before. Now, the first thing I want you to think about is metaphors. You need to get your viewers using their brain. When they use their brain watching your videos, they become one with your content, and that will 100% increase your watch times. To do this, you take a situation your viewer has an everyday understanding of, and you relate it to the topic you're talking about. This entire video has been using a metaphor to help out. And then once you have a metaphor, work out how to not just say it, but to show it visually too. So one simple way to do this is with props. I think people on YouTube really underestimate just how powerful a prop might be. A prop can be anything that you have lying around your house that ties into your metaphor. So to show you what I mean, I'm going to remake the intro of this video using a prop and a metaphor. If you wanted to put a screw in a wall, then the screwdriver will work, but it's going to take a while to get it in. And when you've got 18 screws, well, what felt like a small task now feels quite daunting. The same is true for YouTube. There are many ways to get more watch time on your videos, but what you really want is something like this. Something powerful that's going to get your job done faster. Oh, maybe not that way. See what I mean? It's just way more interesting to watch compared to, hi, today I'm gonna to teach you how to get more watch time. And then after that, it's just the basics of production that will increase your watch time. Sound is the first thing to get as good as you can, because if you think about it, sound is where a lot of information enters our brains. And then visually, when it comes to video, light really is what makes a difference. You want your first impression to count. It's something to work on over time and develop, and I'm not gonna go into more detail here today on light. Instead, I'm just gonna let this speak for me. So this is me with just regular overhead lighting. Watch time isn't something you can hack. It's about understanding what your viewers care about and then structuring your content to entertain and inform them. Let me just get my lights back on. At the start of this video, I mentioned how interest is really important. So check out these two videos here to find out how to get more views on release, more suggested views, and to work out what your viewers are really interested in.